<laughs> hi guys how's everybody doing i hope everybody's doing fine uh this is charles thank you for joining me on this video on the molar attack and okay let's get started so in the video what we're going to do is that we're going to go over some theory for white so that you can play versus the fence successfully but also more importantly and for players that don't know what the molar is i'll show you how you reach this position in your own games so with that said uh we're going to play e4 then black plays e5 and we reach a standard Rui Lopez uh, defense and here when black plays bishop to c5 uh, we've reached the molar and uh, what could we say about this opening well the opening is really probably a top three for many things maybe a top three for top top three main ways of of combating the Rui Lopez top three most dynamic ways of combating the Rui Lopez many grandmasters have employed this system into their opening repertoire um, it's being played uh, more and more as of late. And uh, okay, uh, let's continue here. Uh, white usually plays a4 here, gaining a tempo, forcing black to play rook to b8. And the main move here is c3, but the move that I'm going to recommend is pawn takes pawn. And I like this move because it's very logical. We continue with knight takes c5. And now there's two moves here. Main move is knight takes c5. If black castle is playing on the morphe, then we simply play knight takes f7 and we're winning because after rook takes, we play bishop takes and e5. Our next move is going to be d4 and we're going to blast through black's pieces. So going back, knight e5, d4, bishop d4, queen d4, d6, and now f4. And black, white's play is very logical. We're playing to open as many lines as possible and we're going to attack uh, black in the black squares. So knight c5, there are other moves here. For instance, knight to g6, we simply play e5 following our plan. And after queen takes, pawn takes, knight takes, bishop g5. I like white's play because white's, uh, white has many open lines for his pieces. He's threatening to play knight c3 and knight to e4, attacking the pin piece, and rook a to d1. I prefer white. If c5, then we play queen to d2, knight c4. Bishop takes, pawn takes, and e5. Staying, keeping with our plan, queen e3, and after d5 and knight c3, white is clearly better in this middle game because it's an opposite color middle, uh, opposite color bishop middle game. And uh, typically in these middle games, the one that has the initiative is the one that has the advantage. I think that white is going to be able to have the initiative here because I think he ha he's the one that has the greater probabilities of, cre of creating dynamic chances. For instance, he could play queen to g3 here, and black is already in trouble. So black is going to have to stop uh, f5 or g4 and f5, and uh, the c5 pawn is a target right now. I prefer white. So going back. So main move is knight c6, queen c3, nice move, tickling the knight. Now there's two ways of defending it. Knight e7 being the best, or bishop to b7. If bishop b7, try to guess white next move. It's pretty obvious, right? Just following our plan. e5, knight e4, queen e3. He could defend this knight by either playing knight to c5 or playing d5. If d5, this is the worst way because we're weakening the dark squares. Take a look at the c5 square. Rook d1, and after knight b to d2, we already know the plan. We're going to take a grip on the dark squares. Bishop b4, bishop c5. I like white. If instead knight e7, then we play knight to d2 once again. And after knight c5, we capture on d6. Excuse me. We capture on d6. Queen takes and rook to e1. We're pressuring uh, down the e-file. And after king to f8, the rook on h8 is not going to see the light of day for the next probably seven moves. So going back. Knight e7 is the best response. So here, the main move is e5, keeping with our plan. But I'm going to derail, and I'm going to suggest rook to a7. And I, I like this move very much because it keeps uh, the opponent in, like, uncharted territory where we're better prepared because it's our innovative way of playing the position. So rook a7 is solid. Um, there's many responses here, rook to b7 or bishop to b7. The one we're going to follow is the main move, which is c5. Then we play e5, knight to d5, only move. If knight e4, then we play queen to d3. 
And after bishop to f5, we, pray, we play the very logical rook takes c7 and bishop to d5. And white is winning in all lines. So going back, knight d5, bishop d5, knight d5, and queen to f3. Now black plays queen to b6, harassing the rook. And why don't you play for white here? How would you continue? The move here is rook takes f7. Here black has two choices. He could play c4 or king takes rook. If king takes rook, then we play queen takes knight check, bishop b6, and now queen to d1. Very important to remember this move. Here black has many ways of playing. What I'd like to say about this position is that black is not finished with, with his development, his king is not safe, and we have one pawn for the exchange. Being Having one pawn for the exchange is enough compensation. Now having a pawn for the exchange plus black having his king in trouble and the rook on h8 not being developed, I think that that's more than enough compensation. And uh, we have an opposite color bishop middle game, which supports uh, the attacker. So having said that, let's look at some variations. If pawn takes pawn, then we play f5, bishop c4, queen d7, f6, f7, and we're winning. The best move is bishop c4, we play rook f2, and now let's look at some uh, moves for black. If g6, then we play b3, f5, excuse me, pawn takes d6, f5. And now, if bishop f5, we mate uh, black in about 10 moves. Queen to g4, a nice, uh, basically it's a mating combination that's 10 moves long, which is incredible. And, uh... Black gets mated. So going back. If black recaptures with the pawn, then we play queen to h5, queen g5, and after queen to e7, we're winning the bishop and winning the game. So g6 is a bad move. Now we know the theme of f5 sacrificing the exchange. Rook to d8, how would you continue your attack here? Black is threatening to, to bring his rook into the game, so we have to play e6. And after knight to c3, it's clear what white's idea is. We want to take the bishop away from the diagonal so that we could attack, play queen to d5 check, and harass the king. b3 and white is clearly better here. So let's go back. Back to this position, where black has the opportunity of playing c4. After c4, we play queen h1, queen d5, and once again queen to d1. Here we have a draw because black needs to stop f5. If he plays bishop f5, we play check, and we go back. And if we don't want to draw, we play knight to c3. And once again, uh, I think that this is a highly unclear middle game and it's deemed for more research. I highly suggest that you look at this line and try to find some improvements yourself. Um, any any ideas that you may have, bring it up, you know, bring them to my attention. I'll be happy to go over them, uh, especially in a video. So, um, okay, um, pl uh, please remember to support my videos by liking, commenting, and subscribing, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye-bye.